My name is John, and uh, this is my, I think it's my first uh, Photoshop tutor tutorial I've ever attempted to publish. It's been a bit of an odyssey. Uh, realistic coastlines, how to paint realistic coastlines for your maps and cartography, aka why a cloud brush is a cartographer's best friend. So uh, I'm not really a cart cartographer, I'm just sort of getting into this, but uh, I've discovered some cool things that I thought I'd share. I've been lurking in, a uh, little bit of background, I've been lurking in the Cartographer's Guild website for years now and just sort of uh, salivating over some of the incredible maps that they create for fictional works, for games, RPGs, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and there's a lot of talent flowing through that place. Um, I looked at a couple of uh, tutorials. I decided I wanted to, to try and do some of my own maps. I looked at uh, some tutorials. There was one that got me thinking. It was uh, an older one by, uh, I think the guy's handle was Old Guy Gaming. And he gave a tutorial about uh, how to sort of procedurally chew up the edges of your coastlines and continents to make them look more realistic. If you look at real coastlines and continents, they... Uh, they are not smooth they're they're really really kind of um, torn up and so and so that was cool and using you know noise and so on in photoshop and that was great and i and i i was i did that for a little bit and i i decided i wanted a way to kind of have a little bit more control a little bit more interaction over where that fine detail came out and where i wanted smoother coasts and whether i where i wanted the the little the little islands, etc. And so I set out to kind of figure that out. And this is what I came up with um, was a way to kind of rough things in like so in such a way that you kind of get these more uh, you get these kind of incredible fractal shapes and so on, but you have some fine control over it. I can shrink my brush down and I can give myself, you know, these sort of, uh, these sorts of things that I can eliminate it out if I don't like it, you know, and, and start to, start to really kind of build in what I want. So, and, and this, uh, and it's just that fast. So, uh, this is how uh, you can achieve that. I'll close out my demo, and we'll start just with our uh, our blank background here. So the first thing that you're going to need to accomplish this is a cloud brush. And when I say a cloud brush, I don't mean a cloud stamp. Uh, not just a picture of some clouds that somebody turned into a brush so that you can stamp clouds into your image in the sky or something like that. You need a brush that has uh, some randomness to it and some kind of fractal fractal goodness a la this kind of a thing, all right? It sort of builds up over time and so on. So that's what I'm talking about when I say a cloud brush. Just do a Google, a Google search and you'll find a ton of different kinds um, to choose from. So... Uh, that being the case, let's go ahead and put that back to white. So uh, to set this up, once we have our cloud brush, let's do let's do a little setup. First, we're going to create a water. Layer. I'm going to go with something about like that, and I'm just going to hit Option Delete with my layer selected down here, and it'll fill it with that. Right? Maybe a little bit less saturated. There we go. Now I'm also going to create. A land layer so let's pick a color for our primary color for our land mass let's do something kind of dark and nice and we'll do that uh, maybe a little bit less saturated for that as well and we'll do that great I like those now uh, what would the 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 trick is going to be getting our cloud layer how do we get our clouds which look like this to turn into those nice fractal coastlines so this is how that is accomplished first thing we're going to do is we're going to come uh, oh before we do that sorry we're going to add one more thing i'm going to add a texture to this just because i like working with textures and uh and it adds some interest to our map right from the get-go which inspires our creativity and 
you know, I dig. So I'm going to do it. And uh, so that's my texture. I'm going to change the transfer mode to overlay. And I'm going to reduce that down to about, say, 20% opacity. Just enough to add a little interest there. <clears throat> so now that we have all of that set up, uh, my next step is I'm going to hide my land layer. I'm just looking at my water layer. Select my water layer. And I'm going to create a new layer. And this layer, I'm going to make black. So I'm going to hit X to switch my foreground and white and background down here. Hit X and I'm going to hit Option. This is where the arcane little freaky step comes in um, that I had to go and search all over to figure out how to do this. Uh, we're going to double click on that layer. Layer, it's currently layer six. And we're going to, it's going to default to blending options usually. If it doesn't, just click back up here on blending options. And we're going to go down, we're going to leave all of this the same, except we're going to go to the blend if box. All right. And I'm going to hold down the option key. I'm going to grab a hold of this little slider. If I just grab a hold of it, it goes, takes the whole thing. But if I hold down the option key, then I can just grab half of it. And I'm going to drag it all the way over here to the right. Like that. So up here at the top, it should say 0 slash 255 and then 255. All right. We're going to click OK. Pop. Now, that's all set. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an adjustment layer above that. And the adjustment layer is going to be a levels layer. Okay, levels. And levels is going to apply. We're going to make sure that in our levels layer, it clips only to the layer below it, just like that. And since that layer is black, our little histogram here shows one big spike of black at 100% at black, which is exactly what we expect. Okay, and we're going to leave that alone for right now. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to group. Well, first I'm going to rename this black layer. Black layer I'm going to rename to coastlines. Okay, that's where we're going to paint our coastlines. And then I'm going to select that and the level above it, the, the adjustment layer above it, and we're going to group them. I don't really care what you call the group, just so long as it's grouped. Okay, last thing we're going to do is we're going to enable this green layer, our land layer. Okay, we're going to call that, I'm going to name that land color. Great. And I'm going to clip this layer, this land color layer, to the group beneath it. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to hover over this little line between the two and I'm going to hold down the option key. Holding down option on the Mac, presumably alt on the PC, and this little arrow comes up. Click that arrow and this arrow pops out the side of the land color layer and it gets completely hidden now it's hidden because this is black so if i paint on this black layer with white presumably something's going to show up right and here we go like my sound effects there and that's what we get unfortunately still looks a lot like clouds and that is not what we want so uh, the way we get it to stop looking like clouds is with this levels layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on the levels and we're going to drag these in until they are crunched at the very center. And what these levels are doing, if you don't know, is uh, here is a histogram showing all the different uh, how much of each value I have in my image or in the layer that this is clipped to rather. And I'm going to say anything above this little arrow here is going to be white. So I'm going to drag that right down. Dark arrow here is going to be black. So I'm going to drag this all the way up to the center. So now I have pretty much two colors. And you'll see that what we end up with is this kind of jagged coastline, right? So let's play with that a little bit. We're going to go back to our coastlines. This is where we paint our, our coastlines, okay, with our brush. And with white enabled, I'm going to start painting on this. And I can, I can sort of drag this all out and and I get these really cool kind of free um, coastline shapes. Now, I have a lot of fine control here because I'm using a Wacom tablet, but you don't have to, okay? But so that it builds up over time, if I take my flow way down, then this is going to materialize far more slowly, right? And... And uh, maybe that's what I want. Maybe I don't want it to build out quite so fast. But if I leave it up, 
then I can really rough stuff in quite quickly, right? Now, what happens with if I change the size of my brush? If I make it bigger, then what I get is smoother coasts. Does that make sense? So down here, if we zoom in, I have smoother coasts here because I used a bigger brush, right? Now, let's say I want to, I want to make those a little bit more jagged, right? Sorry if I'm my zooming in and out is a little bit, uh, it's a little touchy. All right, so let's say I want to make those a little bit more uh, jagged, right? I can start to build this up with a smaller brush. And I think my screencast software is really kind of taking me out here. If I make it even smaller, I can start to build out really fine detail. I can start to add in just little islands and archipelagos and little things that are like just super cool you know in my opinion anyway i'm not biased or anything so um so that's really kind of the power of this thing is that it lets you it lets you interactively kind of paint these really these really kind of nicely chewed up coastlines so there are other things that it lets us do as well which are kind of cool so i'm going to uh oh and if you don't like it just hit x switch to black and just paint them out right this is this is so kind of like powerful for that until you get shapes that you like and a for example that i'm pleased with that as a as an overall continent shape right i can uh get a little like extra continents there so let's say i want some more down here right this is a pangea sort of a thing where i can you know it's believable this all used to be one giant here sort of you know jives anyway however you want to do it so uh so let's say we have uh that and we like the way that looks i now have the ability to um uh to go in and kind of tweak this land uh in some kind of interesting ways and this next bit is kind of gimmicky i get that but i thought it was cool anyway so let's say i go in here to my my levels adjustment layer again okay so uh just clicking down here on the levels uh, adjustment layer and now by dragging these around i can actually erode or expand these continents okay so I can, I can, uh, you know, if you're, if your setting suffers from global warming, then uh, rising sea levels are just eating away at your continent. You can just erode those right away, just like that. Okay, more sound effects. And uh, and uh, I'm going to leave mine sort of right here in the middle where I had it because I liked it. But it's just, you know, you can see how over time, maybe, maybe the land, you know, if your setting has maps for multiple time, multiple eras, and that sort of thing, where the the coastlines would change over time. Um, uh, that's uh, that's a possibility there. So there's uh, there's another kind of little aspect that you can do with it. So. Uh, talking there are weaknesses to this particular method as well however and one of the weaknesses is that if you zoom right in on on the edges that we've created if my computer doesn't completely poop out now we're getting down to pixel level here so there's going to be there's going to be some deterioration of the image right it's not a terribly huge image that i'm working with but um if we zoom right in here we'll see that this technique creates these these um this kind of fragmentation this dissolve on some of these coastlines that i don't really like it's not really what i'm going for right this 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 dissolving grainy um disintegration of it so there's actually a way that i can fix that and this way that i'm going to show you is destructive but if you want to you can always duplicate your layers and and uh for the for the for the land mass and just do it to that but i'm going to show you for sake of time i'm just going to go down here to coastlines i'm going to select my coastlines layer where i where i drew all this stuff and i'm going to go up here and i'm going to apply a filter to it and it's a noise 
median filter. Okay, now this noise median filter, you don't want any more than one because this starts to quickly destroy everything that we got out of this particular method. So even as much as eight pixels, you know, as little as eight pixels will just destroy it and it gets worse from there. So keep that down right at one, maybe more if you have a super high resolution image. Um, and you'll see if I enable and disable the preview, it just has the effect of, of eliminating that little, that grainy aspect to, uh, to the map, to the edges. Okay, so I'm gonna click okay on that. And uh, I don't wanna take up too much more time, but there's, I really think that, uh, I'm gonna show you a couple more things that you can do with this cloud brush. Because I really think a cloud brush is one of the best things you can have in your arsenal when you're applying natural looking, when you wanna apply natural looking color or shape distributions. And here's what I mean by that. Clouds, uh, the, the shape distributions and color distributions you see in clouds really apply uh, everywhere in nature. Anything when dirt accumulates or when, um, whenever nature distributes color, it kind of does it in those formations. I think it's second only to the golden ratio in being as common. So uh, how can we use that? Well, if I go up here and I select the land color, let's say I want to apply a little color here. And so I'm gonna take this cloud brush again and I'm gonna change it to a color that I wanna start applying here. And I wanna apply, let's say I wanna apply a more neutral color to this, okay? Uh, some more arid lands or something of that nature. And then I'm gonna set, I'm actually gonna hit X and I'm gonna set my background color to something a little bit more red as well. You know, just uh, something like that. And the reason I'm doing both foreground and background is because I'm gonna come up here to my brush options and I'm going to take my cloud brush and I'm gonna apply some color dynamics. Now you don't need a Wacom tablet to apply these color dynamics. I'm just gonna slide up the foreground background jitter. Okay, like 70%, just like that. Now, as I start to apply this, it starts to apply the color in this sort of fractalized um, distribution, right? And and I can make that broad sweeping applications of the color, or I can make it smaller, more, more gentle applications. I can bring my flow down if I want to and just really kind of get some, some nice, uh, some nice distributions going on, right? It's not a magic bullet. I mean, you still have to have your, your, your eye, right? You still have to have an eye for what you're doing. But, um, but you know, you can start to work with that. And then say so you want to take some back. And so I'm going to sort of uh, take some of it back out with, with some, uh, some green, right? Just a little bit. So say that I like that. Let's just suppose that I like that. Okay. So uh, now uh, having done that, let's apply a couple of, a couple more things, uh, you know, of, of cloud map. A cloud brush might work really well down here in our water layer, right? So if I pick a, a different color that I want to use for that, something not too saturated, not too blue, something in there like so. And then for my background color, I'm going to pick something more green. And there we go. And then, you know, let's call that good. I'm going to create a new layer over the top of my background layer here, and I'm going to set it to overlay. Let's see what we can kind of do with just adding in some of this, right? So I can start to just say I want it kind of any all in areas away from away from the land and let the land kind of keep this little halo around it right and uh, once a cloud distribution 
very that kind of fractal distribution is just really good for that and I, with a wacom tablet if you have a wacom tablet you can just lightly touch and you have such a lot of control over this you know such a lot of anyway i'm screwing it up but you can start to see that in pretty short order you can get something that you know you're like hey that right and then maybe take your opacity down a little if you wanted to mix that in anyway this isn't really a map making tutorial it's just uh more of a tech tutorial so um i think that's just about it uh you can you can see how you can kind of grab these things and just run with them i don't know how to do this stuff in gimp i suspect it's probably just as possible if not easier um so uh yeah feel free to leave me a comment um and i hope this this helps somebody out take care